No, no, but the problem was, see, my problem was I'm a narcissist, and my last girlfriend <laughs> the funniest story at the time ever. used to work for the Ford Modeling Agency, and uh, she told me, oh, when you move to LA, you should, like, you know, go into modeling. So I was 27. Okay. And, like, oh, okay, I could be a model. So I came to LA, and I was looking for work, and so I was opening up the LA Weekly classified ads, and there were, like, all these ads, which most of them turned out to be scams, like looking for actors and models. So I answered one, and I did find an agent. They thought they could like, get me modeling and acting work. So I got enough encouragement that I pursued it for the next 18 months with, with no success. But I thought, oh, you know, I've got an agent who's sending me out on modeling and acting gigs. I could make money as an escort. Like, you know, I'm a good-looking young man. And I did go through a phase where for a couple of years I slept with a lot of like 40-something women. Because they were easier to get along let me, with. Let me ask you a question when you're mm -hmm. done with this story. Okay, yeah. Finish the story. I okay, so I slept with a lot of 40-something women because they were easier to get along with. And how old were you? We didn't really... I was 27. Right, because yeah. it's not like you're in your 40s with the 40s. Yeah, Because no, they I'm, want younger women. I mean, they want younger men. Some of them do, yeah. Yeah, women in their 40s don't want a guy Yeah, so They I, want a younger guy. I hooked up with a lot of women in the 40s that were easy mm -hmm. to get along with. They were skilled. They knew what to do. Because they've been doing it. Yeah, they've been doing it a while. You want somebody who's experienced? Yeah. You gotta, you know, yeah, huh. and they were easy yeah. to get along with. And uh, some of them were even grateful, and they were mature. They they didn't have all the drama like twenty five year old girls. They often, there were a lot of drama, a lot of hassle. We had to spend money on them. Didn't have to spend money on them. You could totally use them and manipulate them, and, and, uh, and you know and they, the thing, objectify them. Like some of them were like, and then discard them. Nineteen years older than me. So today, some of these women would be sixty plus years old. Okay, which is kind of freaky. But I'm done. What are we gonna ask? No, I've dated older women. But let me tell you something, guys. Here's how it is. I once mm -hmm. dated a woman who's 20 years older than me. Did you ever place an ad to be an escort? No. That, I'm not stupid enough to do that. Okay. Um, uh, I was dating women who were older than me. Let me tell you something, guys, that you don't realize. Mm -hmm. Guys who are in their young 20s, mm -hmm. you don't even realize this, but you are the target for, for women in their 40s, and you don't even realize how valuable you are to them. Mm -hmm. They will... Totally go after you, and they'll do anything you want. That was the other thing I liked about. Oh this yeah, place. they would do anything I want. They're gonna do it. They're gonna kiss your ass. If yeah, you're Greg, them. I'm telling you, how old are you? Like twenty? Then do it, Greg. You, You'll feel cheap. You'll let me hate tell you yourself something. afterwards. You're 22. I'm telling you something. Here's your problem when you're 22. And I wrote about this in my book. When you're 22, a lot of the women your age don't want you. They want an older guy. He's got money. Yeah. So you have your choice. You can have a younger woman who thinks you're older than her, right? But she's going to be like 16 years old. Who's going to want a 22-year-old guy? A 16-year-old? So so if you want a younger woman or somebody who's your age, the closest you're going to get is like 16, 17 years old, right? That's what you're looking at. But if you're willing to go high, you go find women who are in their 40s, you've got yourself a match. Because once they hit 40, <laughs> they, we're, if you're in your 20s, you're looking good to them. And you are valuable. You don't have to pursue them. Let them pursue you. And they, they have money, like you said. They're going to be very appreciative. They're going to treat you like a king. They usually come with a house, right? And you're set. But guys in their 20s are so stupid, they don't even realize this. And often a lot of 40-something women are still attractive. Like a lot of 40-something women haven't passed their sell-by date yet. Some of them haven't turned rancid. And it's really not so bad. And guys, like when you close your eyes, it feels the same whether you're with a five or a nine. Thank you once again for taking us to that level. I'm talking about, you know, I, you know what? And I, and I would even suggest to a guy, uh, I, I would even suggest to a guy, to a guy, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Who's in his 20s and looking for a wife, mm -hmm. open yourself up to somebody who's in their 40s. Really, open yourself up. You, this could be the match you're looking for. I remember when I was 28, I went to interview Kit Natividad. She was in a lot of Russ Meyer exploitation movies in the 1970s, so she was 52. I was 27. So I wanted to interview her for my book. So we went to dinner, then we came back to her place, and she was having some trouble with her AOL. This was 1997. So I was installing the latest version of AOL on a computer. She was sitting on my lap, and she was like a very well Here we go. woman. Here we go. And was she was seven? She was 52, I was 27. Was she a seven? An eight? She was a six. 
She was 52. So? But she, she used to be a star, and I'm a bit of a star effer. Like, I like stars. Like, that's a turn on for me. So, oh, the Spurs versus Lakers. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, go so, ahead. So, I get to say goodbye. And uh, she gives me a big hug, and I give her a big hug. And it's like our fall, clothes just fall off, uh -huh. and we collapse to the ground, and we start doing it. She's not wearing any underwear. Okay, thank you for taking us there. And she asked me to do these disgusting things to her. Why are they called... Well, here we go again. If it's sexy, it's disgusting by you. Here comes your Seventh-day Adventism coming out. Yeah. Bring me your... No, you know, she wanted me to... Bring me your repressed Protestant Christianism out right now. She wanted me to, like, lick her in a place that I didn't want to do it. And it was just wrong. But, I mean, I was willing to have sex with her. But, so... Yeah, missionary. She had... Uh, she got breast cancer a year or two later, and she got her... One of, one or both of her breasts cut off. So I was lucky that I got her then. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've forgotten there might have been a point to that story. But, yeah, so she was basically twice my age. I'm right. 27, she was 52. There you go. I, th I really think, not, not just for sex, but I think in terms of a actual committed relationship, mm -hmm. I think that you guys who are in your 20s, who are, who are watching this right now, those guys in the chat room, start opening your eyes open. You might find that very quality, good women in their 30s, late 30s, in their 40s, maybe even in their 50s, are might be something that you should think about. They they will really appreciate you. You know, they're more tend to be more mature than somebody your age, but we know it's hard to say. They're, and you know they might have more money, and they and they're, and they're just going to treat you like a king because you are harder to to get. Yeah. You know you're harder to get than you know the bald fat guy who lives on the tie game at halftime, um, than the the bald fat guy who lives on her block. You know who she sees in the gym or whatever. You know you are attractive. Start keeping yourself open to uh, to these, and you might and they might be right. They might be right, right in your life right now, and you don't even think about it. And that's all I gotta say is keep your eyes open for that. So I had a forty-something girlfriend uh, a few years ago, and she said that she'd been with this young guy, and she said he was like they have so much energy, like they're, they're like a jackhammer. So, like when you're in your forties, normally you start slowing down, so so the younger guys can. Uh, can be, be exciting. I was going to say one other thing. <laughs> so when I was, I used to go to Stephen S. Wise Temple, because Dennis Prager went there. So this isn't too creepy. So I go to Stephen S. Wise Temple for a few years, and like Dennis Prager was there, and I'd see Dennis Prager, and I'd see him with his other like highly accomplished friends. And like it used to really bother me that I wasn't on their level, because like this is in the Pasha, where you just, you know, you can't just do anything. You just can't go up to anyone, and uh, like there are places, you know, in the sanctuary, like Moses, right at the beginning of this week's Pasha, like lays down the law to Aaron, says, okay, you know, you can't go here, you can't go there, you can't do this, you can't do that, and uh, that's what traditional Judaism is like all about, there's all sorts of hierarchy and boundaries, and you don't go up to like a great rub and go, hey, I got a question on this week's Pasha. I mean, unless you have a relationship with them, you don't just like, you know, oh, how you doing, Rabbi Gershon? Or, like, you, you treat people with respect. The more traditional you go in Ju Judaism, the more careful you treat people, and there's more, there's more of a hierarchy, and people who are idiots, they tend to know they're idiots, like in traditional Jewish life. They don't just, like, pop off to the great Rav with their, their opinions. Now, you go to a reform temple or a conservative or modern orthodox, and people like just happy sharing their opinions with the rabbi, and they're calling by his first name. Hey, Joe, how you doing? That's not how it operates. So I remember... Like, Are you I, sure about that? I've been to modern orthodox places where they, you know, it's sometimes like... Sometimes. It, it can vary. It can vary. You know, it's like, you know, rabbi so-and-so. Or often it's like Rav Yosef. No, it's Rav title, but then their first name. Yeah, it's Rob so and so, but it, they don't. Not going to say like Hell Eliezer at, 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 at Yik. No, but but the, the like the twenty something rabbi, they might they might call him by his first name. What's the twenty something rabbi? Well, there was one there. At Yik. Yeah, 